All right, well, hello, I'm David Holmes on behalf of homely.com.au. I'm excited that we've got the team from Richard Matthews Real Estate in Strathfield, Sydney, in the inner west with us today. Uh, they've got some exciting insights they're going to give to us. Now, down below, you'll see the subscribe button for YouTube. Make sure you hit that so you can get all of our uh, interviews that are coming online at the moment. And also, homely.com.au. Follow us on Spotify and also iTunes to get hold of the podcast as well. Guys, it's a welcome to you. Thank you so much for giving us a bit of time today. Thanks, Dave, for having us. Now, let's have a bit of a, a chat about your office. Richard Matthews Real Estate, you're in the uh, the inner west. Um, you've had an interesting time the last couple of months, but you guys seem to be traveling pretty well. Um, we had a little bit of a chat just off screen about you know what we talk about today. And one of the things that really sort of stuck out to me was around your communications. Most of your team is reasonably new, while you guys have been uh, in the game for over a couple of decades. Um, most of your team is reasonably new. So that none of them were working through the GFC. Um, so they probably didn't see as troubled a time as you might have seen back then. Um, but you guys have got a, a very experienced team now and then you, you sort of your communications have been quite interesting around going back to doing real estate the old school way. Talk us through a few of those things, guys. Well, if, you want, if I'll start that off, um, one of the things that we've always pushed to our team are things that have been pushed by a lot of high quality agents in the country. And, and that is firstly, that good people make good agents. And I think um, the, the great people skills and, and, and the beautiful sort of personalities that we have in this office have really shone through during this time. And a lot of our team have really taken the last couple of months to build strong relationships with people, um, whether it's over the phone or using technology. Um, I think Zoom has become increasingly popular of late. Um, so throughout this last couple of months, I think our team's really pushed forward by building great relationships during that time. Yeah, okay. And what about you, Matthew? You, uh, you, you sort of said, you know, back in the old days, you used to drive people around and have more one-to-one -one relationships. How's that changed in the last couple of months? Are you sort of having to foster... sound pretty old there, David, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very true. I think so. One, one of the things that has struck us through this time is the fact that you had to go back to what we were doing when we were much younger agents and um, you had to sort of have that one-on-one -on -one time with buyers and one-on-one -on -one time with people in general, you know, a lot more question-based um, time with people on the phone, you know, finding out how serious they were, finding out their story and, and not just saying, look, come to the open and there's, you know, 50 people there and you don't really chat to anyone. So I think in a roundabout way from a real estate agent's perspective, it's actually back to where we really probably should be as agents, to be frank. Um, and because a lot of our agents have, have sort of come through the ranks in the last four, five, six, seven years, a lot of that hasn't been needed. Um, so I think that's been really rewarding for us as an agency. Um, I think as an agency as well, like I think what we've seen is the, the fact that people are got better skills out of the, the back end of the COVID stuff. So there's there's uh, there's good times ahead, I'm sure, in terms of skill set. And the right people are doing the job for the right reason, I think. Cool. All right. So when you say that the guys are actually more skilled up now than they were, what sort of skills are you talking about? What have they been able to hone and sharpen through this time? I think qualifying people. Yeah. I think we talk a lot about this in our office, you know, making sure that you're dealing with the right people. Um, also, you know, finding out more about people, you know, just in a, in a, in a general sense, Richard touched on it before about, you know, better quality people make better quality agents. And we have a huge belief around that. The whole, the whole Richard Matthews philosophy is we want good people within our brand. Um, and I think a lot of that comes down to how you treat others and the information you want to find out about them. So I think that's been a real feature for us. Um, our business luckily has gone through the, the period of time that we've gone through well. Um, I know it's been tough for people out there, but I think, you know, while business has come down a little bit, we've, we've sharpened our skills and our, it, it's the empathy factor of human beings. It's a time for, for self-assessment as well, um, for business self-assessment, for individual self-assessment. I think what people have really gone back to are their core values. And, and that's what we talk about in this office a lot is the core value of making sure you show respect to people and you're helping people. Ultimately, this is a service industry, David, and it hasn't changed over time. Um, my father was in this industry for over 30 years and he still tells me everything we're doing today, they did. Nothing has changed from that perspective. So. Um, find out the needs of your clients. I think the only difference is there's been less running around, more people sitting either in their homes making calls or in the office making calls, and they've had more time to build those relationships. Um, and we're going to see the benefit of that moving forward. Whilst it's not about the here and now, it's also about further down the track and continuing that relationship uh, that will see individuals and businesses perform into the future. Yeah, I like that. Sorry, Matthew. Mm -hmm. 
No, I didn't cut her off. That's interesting that you, you said your dad was in the, in the business uh, for 30 years. Yeah. What's, um, it's, uh, it's kind of nice to see the father-son uh, continuing. Was it, was it a family business originally or how did no, that start? No, it wasn't. Off? No, no, no. Um, it was more a case of um, he was working at his time. He still tells me he's better than me to this day. He, he reminded <laughs> me as recently as this morning. Um, probably the most there's special probably some element. Of there's it. probably a lot of truth to it. Um, it. It's a great thing. And look, it's, it's always a blessing when people in the area refer to your father over many years and favourably at that. I think the best thing of all is I'm now as an auctioneer using the very same gavel he used since 1975. So the gavel's got a few stories to tell. But um, I, I, again, I just want to really reiterate this. When you do talk to people in a generation before us who are in this industry, they must laugh at us because the things that we're really focusing on during this period are the very same qualities that they display throughout their careers, free technology. So the way in which we access clients, buyers and sellers has changed a little bit through, through tech, but uh, the, the core values remain of uh, uh, integrity and, uh, and uh, authenticity. The other way, to be honest, yeah. I think it's swung. The tech is awesome. Like we all use it and we, you know, through this, obviously Zoom, we're doing it right now and those sorts of platforms are fantastic. And obviously Homely and the reach they have and the information you get on is fantastic. Um, but the core value of real estate is chatting to people and, you know, going into their homes and finding out what their story is. And that, that got lost maybe a little bit. We went too much one way. Um, so I think we'll come back to where we need to be. Cool. Guys, you, you have built a, uh, a special team. Um, and I think it's safe to say that you have a lot of team building skills. Let's talk about that as team building specialists. What is it that you look for when you're looking to recruit? Um, how important is culture and maintaining that inside of your team? And, and, and how do you build a really successful team? Because looking at some of your accolades here, you're now uh, the number seven, uh, according to Rate My Agent, number seven office in New South Wales. You're number one uh, in Croydon, Burwood, Enfield, uh, George's Hall, uh, and a number of other suburbs. How do you, how do you create that? Yeah, look, I think um, the experience that Matt and I have developed over many years, we know exactly what we're looking for in people when we're sitting down with them. Um, experience means very little to us when we meet with people. Character is the number one thing that we look for. I think um, from that, you develop a real sense of loyalty towards them and they do to you. So when you talk about team culture, David, you, you couldn't have picked a more important topic for us to talk about. Matthew and I are huge advocates of that. Sure. Um, so everything is, is culture-based in here. There was a brilliant woman that we listened to at AREC many years ago by the name of Wendy Alexander. She's in New Zealand. And Wendy really hit us um, between the eyes when we were listening to her and that she was referring to even letting go of high-quality performers because they were a cancer within the business. And I think that really impacted Matt and I as we were starting to build our team, grow our team. Um, so for us, it's all about character first and foremost. Um, good people is the main, main focus on that. When because we people, people uh, from our perspective, we can develop all of the other stuff. Yeah. We've got the right character and the right traits to do the business. That's what you can do for us. You can learn the skill, but you, you can't train the attitude. It's so 100%. true. No, you can't make good people make them. <laughs> you know, it's the way they're raised. It's the way they're and their I, lives. It's, I, I it's think, not us. I think also through this, one of the things we've talked about with you uh, and talked about was the fact that we all stick together through this period of time. Um, and at the end of it, we'll all be much stronger. So the team aspect for us is huge. Surrounding yourself with good people is a massive thing for us. Yeah. About the team. Oh, what, what I really want to emphasise there as well is, whilst it's nice for us to, to lead the charge here and, and, and sort of be the ones chatting with you, behind the scenes is what's most impressive for us. It's seeing the other team help, it, the rest of the team, sorry, help each other. It's not a case of just us. It's the way they work together so well, bounce ideas off each other, assist each other at appointments, uh, give advice to each other, share different marketing ideas and so forth. I think that creates a lot of energy in the place and, and, and that's what we're all about. And I think you'd agree. I mean, in any time, let alone this climate, that energy and that positivity is just critical. Yeah, most definitely. So how have you maintained or have you boosted energy uh, in this time and how are you going to maintain that um, moving forward just over the next couple of months? I think the maintaining of it has been, you know, from an in-office and out-of-office sort of perspective, you know, we talk a lot about here about getting yourself right before you're here in the office. I think that's a massive factor. You listen to any of the successful agents out there and they'll tell you the same thing. If, if you really get that part right, it'll filter through into what you're doing in-house. Um, maintaining it, 
look, I think it's the same thing. I think we haven't changed our philosophy. I do think, though, that the team aspect of things has been an, an absolutely massive part of it. Like, we've really built our team on that basis, you know? Well, it's a very different place going in real estate as well. If you told me 10 years ago, even that we'd be on Zoom and be able to communicate and connect with some of the most highly performed and high quality agents in the country, you know, I would have almost laughed at you. But one of the things I really love about real estate is it's developing into the one of the most professional industries in the country. And I mean it sincerely. Um, and, and you've got really good people sharing their ideas, whether they're in Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne all giving their time to, to help improve each other, which is great. I think that's um, that's been really evident over the last you know month or two. The collaboration and the the sharing of ideas has been just so positive and so yeah. encouraging um, between even in between brands. You know, uh, and we talked about brands before. You aren't a part of a large franchise group. You are an independent, um, and that's been really really important to you. Just the agility and the uh, the the ability to move very swiftly around things. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I don't think from, from day one, I don't think Richard and I ever really looked at anything other than our own brand. Um, we wanted to have the ability to make it our own um, in terms of marketing, style, look. And I think for us, it's been a, a real feature of our business success, the fact that we reach into different suburbs. We weren't restricted. Um, and from an agency perspective, give us our own look, I suppose. And yeah, it's unique. And I think people want to see that now. I mean, places like Homely, um, platforms out there make that sort of thing a much easier transition now. You know, probably 20, 20 odd years ago when we were in uh, the beginning of our careers, um, franchises were much more prominent, but you didn't have platforms like Homely where you can put yourself out there. So yeah, we've, um, it's been awesome for us. Yeah, okay. Guys, tell us about the management side of things. You're uh, uh, co-directors of uh, a good sized team and a great size office. Um, you're kicking some really, really strong goals. How do you guys implement decision-making strategies in, in your business? Um, you're seeing that right now. Um, it, it's two folks sitting next to each other. One of the things we, we do very well is we do listen to our entire team. Um, so we always put things out there. The odd fear. The odd normally, fear. normally involves a dream. Most of our decisions have, have had some assistance. But um, um, basically, we do certainly sit with the entire team. Um, or sit down, I should say. It's not a case of sitting down with just managers and so forth. It's the entire team put in. And really, in fairness, the rest of it is just Matt and I sitting down. And again, we came back to the part about being an independent office. Matt and I are fast-paced people. We are, you know, quick to act. And the fact that we've got a business where we're able to just sit down like this, have a chat to each other, make a decision and move forward has really helped us. You know, there's no one else ticking it off. It's just Matt and I. And, um, we disagree. Like, let's be very clear to everyone out there. Matt and I do disagree a lot, but it's two people um, that are doing their best for the business. So a disagreement isn't a fight. It's putting it, and then once a decision's made, we're moving forward. And I think that's just a great attribute about of our partnership and our very close friendship is the ability to do that very well. Yep. Um, growth opportunities. Uh, obviously, you guys are on the same page. What's, yep. wh where's the opportunity for growth in this time? the rest of the year it's all in this time i think this is where great agents go forward i i think our business grew probably in the last three to four years astronomically when the market was tough um that's where we sort of really took off and, and went to another level i think because we believe quality agents and quality people stand out in, in those times and i think the same now i mean we feel within the next 12 months our business is going to go to another level and yeah, we, we're adamant that we'll go. We're in growth mode now. Yeah, definitely. We're in growth mode now. And look, point. You, you listen to great people out there, um, leaders of industry, and they'll always tell you in, in markets like this, a lot of people, or climates like this, a lot of people get out of the industry. Um, and, 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 the, and the tough, you know, the tough people um, and, and tough they're up here, they're the ones that progress. And, and we're all about mindset in here. And, there's never, there, let me be very clear here, David. One of the things Matthew mentioned very early was, was important. We sat down at a as a team at the very beginning of this climate change and we made it very clear to the team that we're sticking together through this, that no one's role was on the line or anything like that because of the conditions. That immediately deleted any form of negativity and it was all systems go. So every single person in this team has been focused on positive it has been focused on the positives about getting business, servicing clients, getting the results. It's never been about looking over their shoulder. That's important. 
that's got to make it easier moving forward over the next couple of months because you've you started out on the front foot with positivity and you're able to maintain that same messaging to the uh, to the team moving yeah. forward. I think um, agents out there who are watching this, I think importantly, if you, whether you have a small team, whether you've got yourself and you're just in an office, you know, with other people, you know, have a positive attitude, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think there's opportunity through these hard times and the reality is we're starting to see the back end of it now and the agents that have picked up good habits and flow them forward from here will really benefit. And I think that's the, the, key, the key thing for our Absolutely. business. We might be the directors of this place, Dave, but we're a team of leaders. Um, it wasn't Matthew and I that came up with the idea of working Sundays here. It was the salespeople out there and the property managers that independently and collectively decided that they wanted to make themselves available seven days a week. And naturally, we were thrilled to hear that. They've let us. We've jumped on board. Um, so it's, Right, okay. Now, we, we, said, we didn't talk about that before. So you're, you're now working seven days a week? And Absolutely, has, we are. How long have you been Absolutely doing that? We are. I think that's probably one of the big changes through the COVID stuff. I mean, the traditional nine to five thirty kind of hours are out the window. You know, particularly when you're working from home, like there was all hours. You know, you'd respond to stuff. You picked up more service. You know, you 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 knew you had to service people quickly. Um, and the reality is, you took every opportunity you could at that time. So for us, that meant Sundays. Um, Richard and I are the same. You know, when the COVID stuff went down. I distinctly remember sitting here at sort of 10.30 at night, sort of formulating our plans to make sure that we got through this, however long it was going to hang around. And they're the habits I think we've picked up that have, I don't know, I feel like the service aspect is where it should be now. Um, okay, so you, you, as a result of COVID, you opened your office seven days a week? Yeah. Yeah, wow, okay. Because this was a decision made by the entire team. They, they pushed it. They brought it once. Yeah. And, um, oh, geez, it's a good feeling when you hear that. Now, Let's keep in mind, if, you, if you're flat and negative, it, it, it will drain you. Um, when you're generating activity, when you're listing, when you're selling, when you're bringing in new managements, when you're leasing properties, it, it, it's a momentum industry and, and that positive energy just keeps you going. It's fantastic. Terrific. Guys, the auction side of things, um, that's been really, really important to you. Um, Richard, you call the auctions there? or Matthew and I both do. Oh, you Matthew both and I do. both do equally, yep. Okay, all right. Um, how was it uh, getting back out on the weekend with some uh, some actual crowds and being allowed to have gatherings again? So awesome to get out of the uh, in front of a camera nice. kind of stuff. <laughs> it was sunny too. It was a nice day to be out. A whole lot better. Look, look again, um, you wouldn't do what we do if you didn't love people and if you didn't thrive and, and on energy and, and, and the um, electricity of a big crowd and so forth. It, it really is something that boosts you. Um, and it's, it's fantastic here in Sydney and, and thank goodness we've got a fantastic um, government that really encouraged people to get back out there because I think it's critical and um, yeah, the whole team saw the difference out there. The, the, the numbers at open homes, auction results, everything started to lift on Saturday. Yeah, so true, so true. Um, having such a, a strong focus on auctions, you obviously appreciate competition and what that does for a marketplace. Um, competition in the portal space. Yeah, huge. I mean, the, one of the, the reasons we back Homely so strongly, I mean, Homely, the, the premium sort of listings that we have on every one of our properties, rental, sale. Um, I think also, you know, just being involved with the, the, the group and the brand and being able to talk to people one-on-one -on -one is a real plus for us. And look, like everybody, um, competition uh, pushes you up a level. Um, and I think having that alternative to being gouged by some of the other portals and their costings is a huge factor. And I mean... Richard and I very early um, through, you know, James who works with you guys and, and uh, the rest of the team, we wanted to back it because we felt as a business, it was great for the consumer. That was the big thing. Like it gave choice and, you know, I think that we, we, we love the concept. Yeah, and it works both ways. I think the fact that Homely are out there now um, and very prominent in our uh, database, in, in our core areas, I think that's been absolutely fantastic. Matt mentioned it. I think it's got a lot to do with, you can take business for granted um, and, and maybe some of the other sort of known um, portals have sort of done that. But Homely is certainly for us, and this is very sincere, it's created not only an important source of competition, but importantly for us, great generation of business. Um, branding. Now, we get great branding. Of, yeah, one of, one of our sales agents here got a call, I think, two days ago from an owner who yeah. saw some of their stuff on Homely. Um, just through, you know, the, just alone from yeah. Google SEO stuff, um, we get great feedback through that. So what you guys do there has been great for our business. And look, the consumers have choice now. You know, it's not just one or the other. Yeah. For us, home is a non-negotiable. We need to use it. 
terrific guys and we uh, we certainly uh, appreciate your support um and you are great um uh, great uh, proponents of it. Um, just la- lastly, just before we sort of cover off, um, we talked about growth opportunities uh, for your team and for your business. What about you guys individually? How do you continue to skill up and get better at what you do? And what opportunities do you see for, for oh, personal that, 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 that won't end. Um, education for us on any level is, is going to be for the rest of our lives. So I guess education for us isn't so much at, at a course as it is in, in, in business operations. So for us, it's meeting with a lot of high quality agents. We we listen to great webinars with the likes of, say, a John McGrath or a Tom Panos or a Phil Harris and a lot of high-quality agents around the country that are giving their time. That's how you skill up. You're listening to some of the best in the business share their views um, from within the team, from around the country, and, and you continue to do that. The other thing for Matt and I is um, we're very, very big on being well-read and, and our market knowledge and just what's going on around, and I think that's an important thing as well. I think one of the big things I know really is it's going well. Like that's a real motivation. Um, 2020 for us is about that now. So yeah. just developing people that are here and bringing new people into the business, and you know, developing them. That's that's something that we take a lot of pride in. So for us, that's what motivates us now. Yeah, cool. Hey guys, it's been really, really sweet to uh, to catch up with you, and thank you for giving us a bit of time. Uh, it looks like it's uh, strong days ahead for the Richard Matthews Real Estate Group, uh, mate. Go and enjoy it, and uh, we hope that you have a, a massive winter and uh, leading into what's going to be. No doubt a huge spring. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Take care. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks.